Okay. <laughs> this is old camera. And this is not a spring chicken. One of the things. Well, actually, I'll just say, what we're going to be talking about are the Emmy screening series. Yeah. Uh, last night we went to see um, the reckoning from the, the Spartacus series. The what? It was, it was the name of the, uh, the episode was The Reckoning. Oh. I thought it was Gods of the Arena. It's Gods of the Arena, but the show was The Reckoning. Oh! The series is Gods of the Arena. Ah. Spartacus, Gods of the Arena. It's a pre-sequel. It's a prequel to um, Spartacus, Blood and Sand, which had to be shut down because the star got cancer. I know. That's really unfortunate. I know. So, but they had that gentleman was there last night talking about, uh, you know, about the fact, you know, he was brought in by Sam Remy. Uh, basically, uh, I love that. Basically, it, it's you know he was there talking. I'm I'm guessing you know, like he, since he was there, he's the uh, the heck he said he's the head. He is the chief cook and bottle washer. He's the creator and the writer of the show. Mm -hmm. So he, he spends a lot of time doing stuff, mostly answering stupid questions about how naughty the show is. I know. In fact, that's what a lot of the Q and A was. I mean, what what they do is he came out introduced it. Um, Stephen tonight. They showed the episode, yeah. right? And then there was a Q&A period with him. Yeah, a lot of the questions had to do about the ultra violence, mm -hmm. which they do shoot with uh, <laughs> that. They shoot. Uh, they use the phantom camera. They use the phantom camera with a digital hard drive that shoots up to 800 frames. You know, is it 8,000? Eight, 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 800 frames a second, oh. I think. I know, it's something so astronomical. We actually have interviewed them before at NAB. Yeah, we've talked to the people with that equipment. <laughs> And they said it's got awful expensive, <laughs> and it take it it eats up. You know, it's like was it nine, ten seconds, nine to twelve seconds, and they have to they they clutter up the drive real quickly. Mm -hmm. So and then they have to you know, but uh, it was an interesting thing. You know, like the they they talk about they buy all the chiral syrup and everything in this city to to do all their effects. <laughs> I know they were saying, do you, do you have the market on blood? Yeah. And actually, one of the things we did find out was. In the series, that is real blood. They just do the green screen. <laughs> they do the green screen, yeah. Oh, there's a lot of green. Okay, uh, one, a couple of things we found out. One, a show made for television on a budget does not transcribe to the large screen very well. I mean, if you're th and you're going, what? Well, because see, a lot of times when you go to the movie theater, you're watching movies that were intended for the movie theater. Yeah. When they're intended for the television set. You're, you're looking at nothing large, it's looking in high definition and nothing larger then, probably than a, a, a hundred inch screen would be as big as you're going to get. Yeah. But you've got a screen that's 20 foot wide by 14 foot long, I mean mm -hmm. 14 foot up, you know, and um, basically I could tell, I mean, when I looked at that thing, God, I saw this, you know, the sets are real, folks. They did point out, the sets are totally real. Nothing else is. Everything behind the sets is all green screen. I thought it was kind of funny because I remember him saying, yeah, we, you know, we heard we were going to be shooting in New Zealand, and I, he was imagining, you know, these green rolling hills like he was in Hobbitville or something. Yeah. And then he found out there was lots of green in the green room. Yeah, and, you know, and basically it's shot in a bunch of warehouses by the airport, so they never get out. But the, all the background, the skies, everything, it's all green screen, everything. And it looks cheap as hell on a big screen. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting there looking at it. You know, they cheaped ass on the arena that they had supposedly that the fighting was. Well, the trick is, is that we get, you know, we'll give you a tip. Their mm -hmm. party is getting ready to escape next season. Well, you know, part of it is, is it was intended for the television set, not for the big theater. Yeah. So they shoot it with equipment that's Design, different. The design is TV equipment. It's also mm -hmm. uh, another irritating thing. Which is why move, um, movie, you know, big blockbuster movies or movies intended for the big screen are so expensive to make. Yeah, because they're shooting with a different camera. Mm -hmm. We're shooting with a TV camera, and a TV camera, they, they because of, well, I'm, I'm, because I'm assuming it's because of the, the cost problems. They're using a zoom lens instead of using a standard fixed lens, which means everything is in the same focal length. You know, if you were to go, uh, if I was to go forward and say, instant, I'm standing here. Look, you can see she's in focus back there. But what they did, they wanted to make certain that they could, you know, deep focus on the person up front or deep focus on what's going on in the back so they'd go 
Which is really, I mean, I, when I was doing TV in the 50s and 60s, you'd have never seen one of the people working on those series ever doing a zoom shot. Mm. Especially you're going, zoop, zoop, you're going to hear your, there and then, back mm. here, there, back there. And then all of a sudden, they go to the other camera that does have the a non-zoom lens, all of a sudden, you go, boom. And you see all this real, all this is in focus then. Then they go back to the zoom. See, one of the things, this is background, is as a cinematographer, is he notices all that? Yeah. I don't. No, she didn't. It's just like I said, I noticed, I noticed the green screen as soon as it comes on. He said, oh my God, that's a bad backdrop. But if you're on a smaller screen, you don't notice mm -hmm. it. But on this big one, I could see the paintings. You know, I mean, I could see that. What, what it is is the background, is, there's a flatness to it. Yeah. And, and, and because of the fact that these aren't real scenes, because they don't have access to the real stuff, they do it like a painting or something and use that. Mm -hmm. So, and then, you know, the skies are all computer generated, but uh, it's, you know, it's an interesting show. I mean, they're talking about, you know, all the made-up language. Well, you know, that was the first time I've seen that show. Well, I've seen it before, but... Really no, not. I... It really was. And I don't take mm -hmm. stars on my cable, but I take Encore, and what happens is, They'll run the uh, Spartacus things over on Encore also, you know, like a month or so after they ran over on Stars and they basically done this number of runs out. They'll dump them over there so you can, they're trying to get you to come over to Stars. Actually, one of the things that they did mention, one of the best things they did to get a lot of fans was um, after they put it on Stars, they put it on Netflix. Yeah. And, you know, immediately after this ran, they do it, and like they're telling everybody last night, also they told the device people, you're going to go buy the DVD version, buy the Blu-ray, because it's as close as you're going to get to 3D. So. Yeah, they said it was really good. Well, actually, going back to that language, what did you think about that? Uh, there was no need of most of that stuff. I mean, they didn't speak like that at all. I mean, they were talking about using, because, uh, okay, the guy is from a theatrical background, I mean, like a stage background, he's a playwright. That, that went in the movie business. Um, so he's basically ba uh, basing a lot of what he's doing on Shakespeare, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, he said nobody can write like Shakespeare, but they wanted to give it a different language so you'd feel like you're in a different period. Yeah. Well, because they were in a different period in Spartacus. Well, not, the, the, know, here's my big complaint, which I was telling her last night. I, when I was working on combat in the um, late 1950s, 1960s, there used to be this constant running battle between, I think, Ron Sobel, uh, Wilhelm Smithers, which was actually named Bill Smith, but because there was an actor named Bill Smith, he became Wilhelm Smithers. He couldn't, that wasn't a German at all. You know, Ron Sobel, who was more German than Bill Smith. But, um, and then uh, Hans Gudentas about, you know, to make this more, we must speak with our German accent, because if we don't, people will not wonder, they will not believe that we have Germans. And then, you know, go, so go, 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 we're in German outfits. This is the United States. They know we're German soldiers. We must be authentic. We must, we must, we must. But well, we got last night guys speaking with Scottish accents. We have a very deep Scottish accent. We have guys speaking, you know, well, I know that it must be this way. You know, uh, we got deep Scottish, we got deep British, we've got Australian, we got New Zealand, and, uh, and <laughs> it's short in the United States. And of course, he notices all that. I just think that that's how they talk. <laughs> no, but it, uh, it is. Uh, okay, I did notice a few. But I mean, if you're going to be speaking with a Scottish accent, it tends to stand out a little bit. I don't think they'd have been speaking like that back in the days of the Romans. This would not have happened. At the least, they didn't have an Irishman because that would have been really difficult. A Scotsman speaking with an Irishman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. I actually know people in the business that can't do an accent. I grew up. Remember, I got, mm -hmm. I have Irish, I got Scots, I have Brits, I have Germans, but uh, I thought that to me is a bloody irritating thing. It said, Miss May, why don't you get some guys in there that don't have an accent? These are also actors. I mean, yeah, um, but see, if it's in the times of Spartacus, that would be Rome. I know, right? And and they they would have had Frenchmen, they'd have had Gauls, they'd have had Jews, they'd have had Greeks, but they wouldn't have had the Scots, and they wouldn't have had the English. They'd have had Germans. In the Brits, they wouldn't have had those people, folks, so it looks a little bit out of place to having everybody thick speak with big, thick accents. Is that part of the heightened reality? Yeah, uh, here, here's a good one. I mean, uh, everybody know, uh, we know, um, Sean Bean is trying to be James Bond, folks, but mm -hmm. he's all over television at the moment. The guy can go from his British accent to a no British accent just like that. You know why? Yeah. He's an actor. Oh, uh, Lawrence yeah, Olivier could go like that. I mean, I would hear, um, okay, last night I heard John Hanna going from his, you know, multiple cuss word things and while he's doing his, you know, 
blip, 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 which we can't say together. Blip, 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 blip. And then he'd be going into a Scottish accent all of a sudden. And, and then he'd go back into his, his you know, get the cuss word bed and then back into a Scottish accent. Well, you know, it was kind of funny because I'm watching like, that sounds like a modern cuss word. <laughs> yeah, oh, they didn't have cuss words like that back then. We're talking lots of four letter F words, lots of C words. But it's very like. Oh, um, well, they're sitting there using. Exaggerated. Plant your seed in me and do not leave until you have planted it. And then they're talking about, you know, everything else that goes along with it in modern English. And they're also, they're, they're criticizing the fact, too, they're using a lot of Latin. Oh, they were talking about the metaphors. The metaphors, but the metaphors were not right. You know what? It's entertainment. I know, but it's, uh, okay, and then... Uh, well, because, remember, he said that the, the intention was to make sure that you're at a different place in time. It yeah. was not to be historically accurate. Yeah, but he also was talking about, okay... That he grew up, <laughs> that was gruesome. He grew up watching movies in the seven, watching TV in the seventies and eighties, mm -hmm. and he wanted to make it something that was entertaining. I remember I was I was doing TV in the fifties. Oh God, that's horrible! Isn't it? That's how much younger this guy was than me. But he talked about a fact that what he uh, I ended up talking to uh, to uh, was it Sam Raimi and and, and Taggart about they were the, they're the same people who brought you Xena and the same people who brought you. Um, Hercules. So they've basically done this before. They've also got the sets already built from those shows. But um, he's talking about that a lot of the uh, television stuff done today is basically self-serving. They're doing. They're, oh, like the self-serving nudity. Yeah, that just um, they're doing things, you know, not for the audience, but just for the show. They don't care about the audience, which is why he was trying to do things for the audience. He also yeah, pointed out. True. He said the there's cut off of gratuitous nudity in that thing. Male and female full frontal, but he said it's not there for the, not necessarily for the sexual spot because you'll see people sitting in the, he said you'll see people sitting in the stands with nothing on because that's what they did do in those days. Mm -hmm. So that's it. And the women didn't wear underwear, so if they bend over, you see their backsides. Well, it's kind of like, you know, they're sitting in what, a Roman bath? Yeah. So what do you expect them to have? A swimsuit on? Yeah. And they, you know what I mean? Yeah, and you saw guys that, uh, uh, you, know, you saw people that basically you're not used to seeing with their clothes off because they're in suits and stuff when you're in other productions. Mm -hmm. But um, I also grew up, I grew up in a surf and sand period, which is basically, I, I, I did things like Hercules, oh God, those are, I mean, I'm talking not the Kevin Sorbo Hercules, I'm talking about the, the Steve, you know, the Reeves Hercules, you know, those type of things, you know, back in those days when they were, you know, the really, you know, I did a surf and sand period. And I also did the surface and because I'm a big person in reality. I mean, I'm, I'm not as big as I used to be, but I was almost 5'11 and 220 plus pounds. So, and I also came from background because my my grandfather was a fencing master at Heidelberg. So I I could sit there and do this stuff, which means I could get away with stuff. I also because my grandmother was from Ireland, she brought a broadsword with her. I'd sit there and play with it at home, which is a double-handed thing. So I could sit there and do this. And I could get into those bad movies. They were really bad. Anybody heard Sons of Hercules? Da 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 da. Sons of Hercules. We're here to save the day. <laughs> those were bad movies. So, but um, um, which leads us into the bit that there is a lot of stunt work being done by both stuntmen and by the actors. Mm -hmm. I, I remember somebody asking about that and. They said, well, yeah, there was some stunt work done, he says, but not as much as you would think. The, the, the different the actors went to gladiator school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said it was kind of hard. He said, when you're working with a phantom camera, which has how many frames? <laughs> But um, uh, about the stunt, having to go to gladiator school to actually learn. Actually, we can guarantee you that there was a member from the show, a cast member, sitting mm -hmm. right behind us. I mean, this guy is about like this, and had he arms like tree trunks. So, and, and he walked in like he owns the place. So, but um, like I said, uh, like a, a, a lot of the stunt, like I said, a lot of stunt work isn't act, isn't stuntmen. It is actors out there, you know, falling down yeah. and stuff. So. And, uh, they did ask if they shot it in real time. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, I think they were shooting in real time, but the problem when they were using the, the camera, the phantom height with a hard drive, in order to make it look like they could give you that slow motion stuff because, you know, like, they, like when you got dodging the bullet or dodging the, you know, the, the sword is coming back, he has to be able to move. So he's basically falling and the sword is then coming over. It makes it look more, mm -hmm. makes it look better, but, um, but I mean, <clears throat> a lot of this stuff, I mean, I could see a lot of people getting accidentally hurt in that show, though. Oh, yeah. So, but uh, I, I would notice, I'm noticing things though that totally historically inaccurate. The problem was when you had injuries as bad as a lot of those people supposedly had, there's no way they could fight again for some time in the future. Mm -hmm. When you're cut clean across here and you're sewed up, sewed up and your face has got a big gash and you're sewed up, you can't fight again. <laughs>